Okay, welcome to setting up Microsoft 365 and having a look at our sign-in options. We're going to sign into Microsoft 365 as a regular user without multi-factor authentication enabled. And then we're going to enable multi-factor authentication and require it and run through that process. And then finally, we're going to turn on uh, passwordless login for Microsoft 365, which is significantly more secure than just the standard two-factor authentication, which only has push to approve or um, push to deny. So make sure you've got your Microsoft Authenticator app uh, downloaded from the um, from whichever store your phone uses. That's the Microsoft Authenticator app. You're going to need to use that um, as opposed to the Google Authenticator or Authy or any other ones. That's going to become apparent later in the process as to why we need to use that app. They're free. Uh, they don't take up much space on your phone and they are required. So make sure you've got that installed and we'll move, <clears throat> we'll move on and we will log in to our demo environment as Deborah. So let's go and sign in and we'll put Deborah's Deborah B at soldemo.com. Let's log in as Deborah and we'll put Deborah's password in. So that's allowed Deborah to log in. Uh, we're logging in in private just for convenience here, but we can see welcome to your new office, Deborah. And there'll be a couple of little clicks that we've got to do to get through that initially being the first time that Deborah has logged in and we'll just go and skip through these and okay so it looks like there's another one here so we'll just close that now all right <clears throat> we have zoomed this in for the benefit of those who might be watching this on mobile devices so we can see here we've got our office portal uh, we've got Deborah's uh, account manager up here and her picture um, so what we want to do is just have a look around. We can, we'll be able to see here that we've got uh, recent documents that Deborah's been working on uh, or been shared to her, <coughs> recently opened nothing. So this is stuff that's going on around her. Now, if, <coughs> if this was a real environment, I'd be quite concerned because the only requirement to get into this has been Deborah's password. That simply means that if somebody guesses Deborah's password, they've got full access to this, no matter where they are on the planet. And that would be a bit of a catastrophe for the business. So let's go and set up two-factor authentication. Now, the first thing that Deborah's going to need to do is add the Microsoft Authenticator to her account. So let's just click on here, the account manager, we can see that we can now view Deborah's account. So let's open that up. And <clears throat> right away we can see Deborah is an administrative assistant. So she'd be a high value target for somebody who's trying to break into this organization. Let's just zoom this in a little bit for the benefit of people on mobiles. So we can see administrative assistant. Uh, we've got a security information here. That's where we want to go because we want to add or complement the security that Deborah's already got. So let's click on update info. You would do this yourself on your own account. <clears throat> so now the system needs to verify that Deborah is who she says she is because she's doing something that is considered um, a high security operation. So we're going to get a text sent to the phone number that IT have put into Deborah's profile already. That's why IT will ask for the phone number and potentially personal email address and stuff like that of a user who's starting before they actually start because we need to set this up so that they can securely go and adjust their own information. So let's click on verify your identity and click on the text message. And we've just been sent the code from Microsoft because it's really fast. And let's just enter that in, 207-424, and we will click verify. So that 
now means that we can we've signed in um deborah's account information will come up here in a moment let's again zoom that in just a little bit so here we can see that the default sign-in method is a text message to Deborah's mobile phone. We can add a sign-in method, which is what we want to do. We want to add a sign-in method and we want to add the Authenticator app. As I said before, we want that to be your Microsoft Authenticator, not a Google Authenticator. So <clears throat> now this is going to require some interaction between the screen and Deborah's mobile. Okay, so let's add the Authenticator app. Now, I've already downloaded the Authenticator app. I don't need to click download now on the screen in front of me. What I need to do though, is I need to open it on the phone. So let's just open the Microsoft Authenticator app now. And it may require you to unlock it. Now in the Authenticator app, there is in the settings, the option to um, turn off app lock or turn on app lock. Use that as caution. If you're giving your phone to small children to play games on, then leave app lock enabled. Otherwise, it's reasonable that you can turn that off just for convenience. Um, however, convenience does reduce your security. So let's just turn it off for the purposes of this. Okay, so now we have to add an account, right? So We'll click next, assuming that we've done this step. So now it wants you to add an account and then choose work or school account. So on the mobile, I'm now going to click add account. And I'm now going to choose a work or school account. Now on the mobile, I'm being prompted to either sign in or scan a QR code. So let's go with the next step here, which is to scan a QR code. It's going to be the easiest way and less keystrokes. So let's just click on scan QR code now. Now this QR code scanner is super fast. In fact, you can see that we barely even got the image into the brackets. And now we have the account for Deborah set up in the authenticator. So what it's going to do now is when we click next is it's going to test it. So Deborah will receive a notice on her phone which says approve or deny. So this would be, we would approve this because this is um, a valid sign in. So we've just approved it and we'll click next here. So now we have the phone as a method and we have the Microsoft Authenticator as a method of uh, validating the account and completing a two-factor. So what we need to do though, is we need to change our default sign-in method and we need to change that to the Microsoft Authenticator notification. All that does is tells the system that whenever Deborah needs to verify, go to the authenticator first instead of going to a text message first. It's far more convenient and much more and generally considered to be more secure. Okay, now we can close this and we can sign out of this. Now having done all that, nothing will happen. If we sign into the account as Deborah B, she still won't be prompted for two-factor authentication because at the moment, this organization doesn't have two-factor authentication mandated for every user. So I'm just going to use a conditional access policy in the admin center to enable or, re or mandate that two-factor authentication is required for all user sign-ins. This should be the situation for every single organization out there. Um, and if your organization doesn't require two-factor authentication to sign in, then you need to ask your IT people to turn it on because they're not doing the right thing by the business if they don't enable two-factor authentication. All right, let's just try and sign in now. And we'll, si we'll, we'll sign in as Deborah B. Now, there may be a cached... 
uh, there may be a cached token which may require us to use a different browser but let's just check this first nope it's working as we expected it to and on the mobile phone we now have the option to approve this sign-in so I'm going to click approve and now we have approved the sign-in and we're logged into uh, Contozo Electronics as Deborah B and <clears throat> we used two-factor authentication to do it now that approve or deny thing that came up if Deborah made a mistake and accidentally clicked deny then no big deal she can just simply repeat the process and sign in again and click approve however if it wasn't Deborah who was initiating the push to approve on Deborah's mobile if it was some sort of a hacker or someone who <clears throat> had guessed her password and wasn't authorized to use Deborah's account. And if Deborah accidentally clicked on yes or approve, then she has then given somebody else, a foreign actor, um, a hacker, a criminal, etc., access to everything within Contozo Electronics that she has access to, and potentially more. But that would be an that would be an incident that if she noticed it and realized it, Deborah would, or you, would be uh, rec highly recommended that you contact your IT department and report it. They're not going to criticize you. They're going to thank you for doing that. Um, they have tools <coughs> that they can use to revoke authentications and revoke multi-factor approval and stuff like that. So they can undo the damage, um, but it's best if this is done very quickly or as soon as possible because until that's done the remote uh, unauthorized um, person in the account has full access to everything in the system so what we want to do though is we want to get rid of the option to accidentally click approve when she should have clicked deny we want to remove that from being an option so what we can do now is if we look back at our authenticator, we have uh, Deborah's account sitting in the authenticator. When we click on it, we can see that we have notifications enabled. We have a one-time password code that can also be used to, to identify Deborah. Uh, we have some, also, some other options in there, including enable phone sign-in. So it's enable phone sign-in that we want to get to. So let's click on that. So this says it requires device registration and that we set a passcode um, to get into the phone. So the phone passcode, fingerprint, biometric, face ID, any of that stuff is, is going to be required. So we've got that in this case on this phone and we need to register this device against Deborah's Office 365 account. That, allow <coughs> that, excuse me, that allows um, the system to know that this phone is allowed to sign Deborah in. So we're going to click on continue and it's going to ask us to sign in as Deborah. So a moment please while I just type in Deborah's password. And it's going to do that thing where it wants us to approve or deny the sign-in request. So, of course, we want to approve it. And now it's going to ask us to register the phone. So keep your device secure, register the phone. So select register. And now we get a green tick saying that the device has been registered. And when we come back to the Microsoft Authenticator and we see Deborah's account sitting in there, if we click on it, we can now see that passwordless sign-in is enabled. So yay, we've had a win. Uh, we also know that it's enabled because we have the option to disable phone sign-in. So 
logic speaking, if you can disable something, then it must already be enabled. So let's just see what happens when we sign in with, pa with passwordless authentication. So we'll sign out. And now we're going to sign back in as Deborah B. So right away we can see that the password passwordless authentication is presenting us an extra option here. We can now choose to use an app instead. So if we use an app to sign into 365, the system will now generate a random number and present it to the phone and the phone now asks us if we're trying to sign in, okay? We, we can't click yes until we enter the number that's on the screen. If we, get the num if we get the number wrong, okay, it will tell us that the number didn't match, okay? So if we get the number right, let's put the number in again and we'll put the correct number in this time and we'll click yes. So you notice that this is now signed us in. We have not required to enter Deborah's password. We were required on this particular mobile device, which doesn't do face ID, to, uh, to provide a pin code or a fingerprint. That is considered the second factor of authentication here. So the first factor of, of authentication is the matching of the number that was presented and the second factor is now the biometric that's required to unlock the phone and that's all we required. So that's now meant that Deborah has successfully signed in with two-factor authentication and it's passwordless. And that makes Deborah's sign-ins to Microsoft 365 a much more secure experience than using it any other way. So thank you for watching. Uh, we uh, do hope that this has helped and that you're now able to sign into Microsoft 365 in a much more secure way. Thank you.